right uh, let's have a look at our, one of the scenario uh, we are in pediatrics patient is two years old has been brought to the hospital by the mother because patient had a fit she had a fit patient had a fit and she has been managed in the a and &E and now she has been referred to us so we have to talk to the mother mrs diana julie so we are talking to the mother and child is two years old she had a fit right and also we have been given uh, some of the findings the temperature of the child is 38.9 in examination there is redness over left ear drum right so it's look like there is some problem in the ear it looks like uh, it might be otitis media the color of tympanic membrane we're talking about tympanic membrane color right so adults uh, normal color is pearly gray right and if you're talking about children the normal color is pink right but here they say redness over the left ear drum, which is actually going more towards infection or titus media. Moreover, we have got temperature also 38.9. So what we have got, we have got the fits. We have got 38.9 temperature and we have got redness over left ear drum. So these are the things we have got. So on the basis of that will be doing this uh, OSCE station right so let's see what we have to do in this we're discussing about uh, febrile convulsion actually let's uh, discuss a bit more about uh, febrile convulsion you know whenever we have got any fit we have to take the history in a way we are covering before we are covering during we are covering after right so in the during in the during whenever we are dealing with the fit we are dealing with the fit we are dealing with the fall we need to go the same way Right. So if we have got a fit, so we need to ask whether it was uh, or it, it was localized or generalized, whether only one part of the body was involved or it was generalized. That's very, very important. And whenever we have got uh, fits positive, we need to cover a few more things. We need to cover whether there was any uprolling of the eyes. That's pretty important. We need to ask about tongue biting. We need to ask about the urine or stool incontinence. So these things are pretty important. Fits, whether it was localized, generalized, uprolling of the eyes tongue biting incontinence right and we need to cover we need to cover whether there was any loss of consciousness or not if yes we need to cover for the duration for how long I know like child won't be able to tell all those things but uh, hopefully somebody has witnessed that fit and that's why we are taking this much of history that's why we're asking this question to the mother maybe mother or someone else uh, have uh, witnessed this fit so during the fit we are asking whether it was localized or generalized we are asking whether there was any uprolling of the eyes tongue biting or incontinence and uh, loss of consciousness and if there was any loss of consciousness we are asking duration of that loss of consciousness then we need to cover after how was the child after that whether he was confused whether he was drowsy he was sleepy whether there was any trauma if there is any trauma we can ask any injury anywhere in the body that is very 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 important and uh, nausea vomiting because it's very important for example child uh, had a fit he fell down had a head injury so after the head injury whether there was any nausea or vomiting because that is very 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 important because that might be fitting into the criteria of CT scan right and we need to ask for amnesia we need to ask whether the child was able to recall the events it also depends on the age of the child as well eh? and accordingly we can ask this question whether there was any recollection of the events or there was amnesia completely so that is what we cover in after how was the child after that whether there was any trauma any confusion any drowsiness any sleepiness any nausea vomiting so that is we are covering in after so any fit any conversion we have got we are going to take the history the same way we are asking during we are asking after now we need to cover before as well before why we do before we need to find out the cause here in the question we have got the patient temperature is 38.9 that is temperature right so we are thinking about infection but where is the infection they have given us more and more hint that on examination what we found there was uh, uh, redness over the left ear drum which is actually a good thing because it is going towards otitis media right but it can be lots of other things as well so make sure in before we are covering these things 
definitely it can be a tightest media so ask if it is only one year or if there was any discharge right why it is important i'll tell you i'll tell you in a while otitis media or any simple sore throat in children can lead to meningitis we need to cover the questions for meningitis as well so what we'll be asking for meningitis we are asking for the rash whatever what else we can ask we can ask for photophobia right and we can ask for a headache we can ask for neck stiffness as well i know you know these questions are a bit difficult to ask uh, from a child how we can ask rash you can ask uh, photophobia if your child is shy to light if your child is crying while moving the neck that is for neck stiffness so that is how we can ask right pneumonia we can simply ask uh, whether there was any cough a uh, uti like if a child is crying while passing urine a child is crying while passing stool or we can always ask if there was any diarrhea or any constipation right and here urine we're asking or maybe we can ask any change in the color of urine so all these things we have to ask because in before we are trying to find out the cause Ah uh, yes we got the cause here in the question if you see on examination we got there is redness over the eardrum so looks like a tightis media that might have given rise to a uh, febrile convulsion because it's pretty common in uh, this age group right but make sure we are covering other differential as well uh, in any of the oski exam what they are looking for they're looking for if we are being a safe doctor or not so make sure we are not leaving that point we are making sure that we are the safest doctor right so that's what we need to cover uh and if the patient has got fever we need to say like for how long the patient has got fever let's say patient has got fever for one two days because if it is uh, more than four days we need to give antibiotics we give antibiotics when it is more than uh, uh four days we go for antibiotics otherwise there is no need for antibiotics in case of febrile convulsion right and uh, if the fever is for one two days there is no need to do any of the investigation right uh febrile convulsion is pretty common in uh, children those who are uh, age from 6 months to 5 years but most commonly you will see from 6 months to 3 years that is uh, the most common age group that we will see in uh, febrile convulsion a uh, few things about uh, febrile convulsion uh usually you will see it runs in the family as well for example one child has got this uh, febrile convulsion and the siblings they are also prone to have a febrile convulsion why febrile convulsion happen it's because of fever it is because of fever so if we control fever we can uh, control febrile convulsion so if a child has got a history of febrile convulsion so we'll be telling it to the parents uh, if your child is getting fever again so make sure uh, you're giving something for the fever you're keeping them hydrated plus you're giving paracetamol to reduce the temperature then it is unlikely to have a febrile convulsion moreover when your child will grow up uh, maybe after 5 years it's unlikely to have a febrile convulsion right and of course for the safety netting for the warning sign we can always tell uh, to the parents like if your child develops this kind of fit again what can be done in those kind of cases uh, make sure we put them in recovery position right that will be on the left lateral side on the left side and make sure uh, uh, he or she is not uh, injuring himself or herself right and make sure there are no sharp objects nearby and all these things we have to be considering in febrile convulsion do we need to give any treatment the treatment would be symptomatic symptomatic right uh and antipyretic right like the paracetamol can be given and the hydration can be maintained and the hydration of the child can be maintained that's it nothing much right and we'll be keeping the child in observation for some time right now i mean there is no answer for how long we'll be keeping the child in the hospital uh it just for few hours you know it depends on hospital to hospital as well depends on country to country as well uh for example child was brought to the hospital in the evening time maybe the consultant might be thinking let's keep the child overnight isn't it but if the child is um uh, uh, like in the com- coming to the hospital somewhere in the day time so maybe they'll just keep uh, and i for few hours and then discharge so it depends so if they are asking like uh, for how long it's just for few hours right uh regarding the medication what do you think like do we need to give any medication for the fits itself for the convulsions actually there are some indication there are some indication for giving the medication for the fits 
If child is having repeated fit, repeated fits, we can give the medication. If the child was having repeated fits, yes, it can be given. If the fit is lasting for more than five minutes, yes, we can give. And if uh, parents are leaving, not leaving, it's living far from hospital, far from hospital and it, it takes maybe an hour or two uh, to reach to the hospital. So we might consider giving uh, some medication. Uh, maybe usually we give uh, uh, rectal diazepam, but usually uh, if they are not fitting any into these criteria, we never give. If they have got repeated fit, more than five minutes it's lasting and uh, uh, they're leaving far away from the hospital, we might consider giving them uh, uh, rectal diazepam otherwise we don't give you know why i mean if they're leaving far away what can happen so when they're bringing the child to the hospital what can happen maybe meanwhile the child will develop another episode of the fits just to avoid that we might consider giving rectal diazepam right <clears throat> Febrile convulsion epilepsy what do we think like is there any relationship between uh, febrile convulsion and epilepsy uh, actually, epilepsy is uh, something like, say, I mean, chemical Im imbalance in the brain. Same as uh, febrile convulsion, but underlying cause is fever in case of febrile convulsion. This won't be the case in epilepsy. Right, so whenever we are getting a case of febrile convulsion, we can ask, like, any family history of epilepsy? That would be very, very important. Any family history of epilepsy? Uh, there are minor chances, not uh, very big chances, minor chances that febrile convulsion patient will end up having uh, epilepsy later on in their life. Not pretty common, but yes, it might be the case. So that is what we have got in uh, febrile convulsion, right? Uh, it's nothing much to worry, but we have to take care when child is having this. When a child is having, make sure you tell the mother, you just note down the time, make sure he or she is not uh, hurting himself or herself and put them in the left lateral position. That is what we have to do. Right, so that is our febrile convulsion. But uh, what are the, I mean, criteria to give antibiotics if we have got otitis media case? Because this case, uh, I mean, uh, otitis media, we are discussing otitis media. Patient was having fever because of otitis media and then it became febrile convulsion. Right. So these are the antibiotics criteria. Otitis media antibiotics are usually only considered if your child, if your child has a serious health condition that makes them more vulnerable to the complications. Very, very important, such as cystic fibrosis. So make sure when you're taking history, we are covering these questions of cystic fibrosis and congenital heart disease. So any heart disease, uh, maybe we were aware of or cystic fibrosis we can ask any repeated infections so that is very very important we need to ask sore throat any repeated infections if a child was having and if child is less than three months old that is very very important child is less than three months old we may consider giving antibiotics or child is less than two years old with an infection in both the ears you know, whenever we are having a case of ears or maybe eyes, for example, uh, if the patient has got problem in one eye or one ear, make sure we are asking about the other eye and other ear as well. That's very, very important. Here, in otitis media, in case of a child, if child has got uh, infection in both the ears, we simply give antibiotics. So make sure uh, when they are saying the child has got problem in one ear, we need to ask for other ear as well, whether the child has got problem in both the ears or not, right? Uh, has discharge coming from the ear? If discharge is coming, that is straight away criteria to give antibiotics. And fever for four days, we may consider giving antibiotics. So otitis media case, we need to know the criteria to give antibiotics. So that is very, very, very important. So that's our febrile convulsion, right? So we are covering before, during, after, making sure we're covering all the differential. If fever is for one, two days, no need to do any investigation. Treatment is usually symptomatic, antipyretic, hydration, and keep the child in observation. That's it, nothing much we do, right? Thank you.